Hey guys, Roger, back with another video. I am an enterprise solutions architect working at AWS. In this video, we are going to go over a very important feature that's just announced. Uh, so this is the public blog post, uh, which says announcing improved VPC networking for AWS Lambda functions. Uh, but what this means is uh, for those of you who were using lambdas in VPC uh, might have experienced uh, cold starts and some concurrency limitation problems. With this, those two issues are fixed. Uh, so let's go over what this means and how it is fixing uh, the existing problems. Let's start by understanding how lambdas in VPC uh, are created. So when you create a Lambda within a VPC, uh, it doesn't really create a Lambda within your VPC. Uh, it creates a Lambda within a VPC, uh, which is managed by AWS in the same region. Uh, so if you think about it a little bit, uh, let's say you create a Lambda, allocate it maybe one gigabyte or two gigabyte of memory, uh, and then uh, it runs, right? So you don't want uh, the capacity of your VPC uh, to be used because of this, because you still have to run EC2 and all the other stuff. That's why the firepower of the Lambda or the Lambda underlying computing uh, infrastructure is not uh, consuming uh, the capacity of your own VPC. Uh, it, uh, it's provided by a managed AWS environment. Okay, so we have this Lambda on the AWS Lambda VPC managed by AWS. So uh, any invocation uh, that coming to your uh, Lambda, it comes via the AWS Lambda API. So uh, don't get confused that this API is uh, the API gateway API. Uh, this API is simply the API uh, to invoke the Lambda. It's like, you can think of it as uh, AWS managed API uh, that's executing um, the Lambda. So how does that Lambda interact with your VPC? Uh, so when the, uh, that Lambda within VPC is invoked, uh, it actually creates the Elastic Network interface in your VPC, which is the customer VPC. Uh, and so basically this Elastic Network interface uh, consumes an IP address in the VPC. And this ENI uh, interacts with the resources within your VPC. Um, so uh, let's dive deep into this a little bit. Uh, so let's say your Lambda has to interact with a, um, Aurora Postgres or RDS uh, running within your VPC. So what happens is uh, that Lambda gets invoked and this Lambda uh, running on the AWS Lambda VPC uh, interacts with the Elastic Network interface which is running in your VPC and this ENI uh, interacts with the databases or any other resources within your VPC. So uh, there are a couple problems with this uh, approach. Again, this was how it was done before. It's fixed now. So one is every time your Lambda is scaling, uh, so let's say uh, you are running uh, 10 concurrent copies uh, of your uh, Lambda, right? So each copy of your Lambda or each execution of your Lambda is creating an ENI, right? So let's say this Lambda is running one, two, three, four, five, five times uh, concurrently. It's gonna create five different ENIs. And there are a couple problems uh, with that. And the way ENIs uh, was being created was uh, they were created and attached during the function execution, right? In the, in the real time. Uh, and uh, creating an ENI takes a little bit of time. It's not uh, done in milliseconds range. It's actually done in the seconds range. Uh, so when your traffic increases, your Lambda scales, and then every time it's scaling, it has to create this ENI, and that uh, execution needs to wait. So uh, that's why, um, for those of you who are trying to do scaling Lambda in VPC, um, uh, you probably face a little bit of delay. And, but that's not the only issue. Another issue is, uh, as your Lambda scale within the VPC, uh, it creates all these ENIs. Uh, each ENI is actually like an IP address on your uh, VPC, right? So as this Lambda scale, it exhausts uh, the IP addresses in your uh, VPC. 
<laughs> so it leaves uh, less IP addresses to do other stuff, like if you are uh, spinning up EC2, uh, RDS, all that stuff. Uh, and also there is a scaling limit, right? Because uh, let's say in VPC, you have uh, 3000 free IP addresses, and then suddenly uh, your Lambda goes beyond 3000 concurrent execution. Uh, so it's gonna exhaust all those 3000 IP address, and then uh, the rest 2000 uh, concurrent execution, uh, they, do, they will throttle or they will fail. So how is this getting fixed? Uh, after that VPC improvements. So in this uh, new design, um, on the AWS Lambda Service VPC, uh, we have a VPC to VPC NAT, and that NAT is talking to the ENI. And what this gives us is a Lambda share ENI. So all the Lambdas with the same subnet and same security group, uh, they share the same Elastic Network interfaces, even when they scale. Uh, and another improvement is the ENI is attached during function creation, not execution. So um, in the prior uh, environment, if I go back, these ENIs are getting created and attached when the function is getting called, when it's getting executed. So it's eating up uh, the execution time. However, in the new world, this ENI gets created and attached uh, during the function creation, not execution. So even for the first execution, it doesn't uh, eat any time. So, uh, and again, since all these uh, lambdas are sharing an ENI, even when they scale, uh, they don't exhaust the IP address in your uh, subnet. So that's how uh, for lambdas in VPC, the cold start, the ENI cold start, and the scaling limitations uh, are fixed. So uh, whatever I explained, um, it's given in this blog post. Uh, you can you can uh, take time to read this, but I just simplified it a little bit. Uh, I will give the link to this blog post uh, in the description. Hopefully this video um, enhanced your uh, serverless knowledge. All right, guys, uh, this is the video. If you like the video, please uh, like and subscribe. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.